Okay, we're back. We're going to review Friday Night Flashbacks gameplays. Um, it's not a very long video, and I'll explain why as I'm going through the games with you. Um, I tried playing Eight Eyes. This is the first time I've um, played this game ever. It was like uh, about a year ago. And, uh, man, I tell you. There's some harder difficulty settings on this game that you can use codes to, to, to get those and I <laughs> I can't even make it through the first the first little bit of it. So um but I just kinda wanted to show you guys a stage and then just kinda talk about the game a little bit because like that's that's what I'm trying to do. Some of these games I've never played through before and um I'll let you know that during the beginning of the video if I've ever played them before or if I've not played them before. Um, some of them I haven't played before and I'm trying to play through them. Uh, if I can get through them, I'm, I'll get through them. If not, um, I'm to the point to where I just want to show you guys what it is. Um, the other ones, some of them I've played through and I still can't beat them to this day. And then there are some that are, um, ones that I can play all the way through. So we'll use a couple of different playthroughs for, for those I can get through. Um, Eight Eyes is a game I've never played as a kid like I said I just kind of found it about a year ago playing it um, there are playthroughs on uh, YouTube that you can watch but I'll just kind of tell you some of the stuff that's going on anyway um, the story on eight eyes is there's a king that there's um, it's post nuclear war I believe um, apocalyptic thing um, and there's a king that's got these things called the eight eyes and using those he is able to um, he's able to make the world prosper again um, these dukes that he has they um, they want the power for themselves so um, they grab the eight eyes and banish him to the wasteland um, I, obviously tired of playing second fiddle so you have to go to each of these areas and defeat these dukes for their um for the uh the jewels which are known as eight eyes and um you know you have to take them back and, and get the king back so here's what happens this game can be two players there's um a guy named Orin and a bird named Cutter. So you can play as two players or you can play as one. And as one player you control you can control both the bird and um, you can control both the Cutter's the bird and Orin the guy. Um, two players, one can control one, one can control the other. There is a continue function on this game, um, but also there's a password function. So you get a password after every boss you beat. Um, there are passwords that are online to let you go a little bit further. I just went into the first stage that most people tell you to go into, and that is, um, I believe it's Spain. And what you do is you go into these castles, and you go kind of up one side, down the other, and then you'll face a boss, and you collect stuff as you go up through there. A lot of the enemies have a, they have a pattern, but they're still... Um, slightly difficult to defeat that's why I didn't really go through it a whole lot because uh, this is not a game I had played um, a whole lot of and uh, I just um, it's not something I I felt was a necessary thing to have to try to go through um, especially not with the time constraint on you know I was going to try to get to some different stuff so um, I played through Spain, got to the boss, and uh, the boss killed me. You only have one life um, before you die on there. Uh, you can get power-ups and things of that nature. What's weird about the game is when you beat one of the bosses, you get a new sword. Now, the new sword will work against one of the other bosses, but not the other bosses. It'll do more damage to one boss, but then it won't do any damage any more damage to the other bosses so it's kind of like Mega Man in that aspect you have to have the right you, you know you have to go the right order like I said Spain's first they do have the seven stages which are um, Egypt India Italy Arabia Africa Spain Germany and then um, once you beat all seven of those stages then you go to the house of Ruth and at the house of Ruth you have to fight 
all the bosses again. So um, that's like a, an endurance thing. Uh, and then you can place the jewels and then uh, they, you, you get the king. Um, the Like I said, the bird, which is catchers, can pick up, can attack and pick up items. Um, this game's not bad. Uh, to me, it feels like a mixture of all three of the first Castlevanias, the difficulty of Castlevania 1 and Castlevania 3 put together, and then kind of gameplay mechanics of um, Castlevania number 2. That's what the game kind of reminds me of. So, um, it is difficult. It does have some harder modes. Can you, If you can get through the first mode of it, um, it does have some more difficult modes, uh, but the games, to me, it's hard enough on the normal level, and like I said, we I, I didn't go through a whole playthrough. You can watch um, a couple of these other channels. They probably have a whole playthrough of it, people that are more a little bit more familiar with the game than I am. I do know that after every boss fight, it looks like you're sitting down and drinking tea with them. I guess for I guess they're under mind control, or maybe they're, or maybe they're just mad or something, and and then you have tea with them and calms them down. I don't know. I I I, I never really understood the whole purpose. So if somebody knows what that's for, uh, you know, you can add that onto the video and and uh, let us know what that's for because I I didn't really quite figure it out. So um, not much to say about the game other than that that it is what it is, you know, I'm, I won't say it's a bad game. It's one of those that it's good. It's difficult. It's difficult, but it's a good game, you know, and, um, you know, take it for what it's worth. You know, a lot of games are difficult, but they are very good. You know, they're good games, but they're difficult. And, you know, we're not, we're not going to sit here and just try to, you know, beat all of these, you know, through there. Now, I played, um, the second game for the evening was A Boy and His Blob, um, also known as Trouble on Blob, on Blobonia. Gosh, that's a mouthful. Um, I played this game when I was a kid. I had no earthly idea where I was going or anything like this. I actually had to look up a playthrough the other day for this game because I still, to this day, didn't know where I was going. And now I figured more out about the game than what I knew before. Um, I did not get as far as I wanted to a playthrough for this, um, that I looked up was about 35 minutes, 35 to 40 minutes, um, to go through the, the game. Um, I'm just going to touch on some stuff. And like I said, I didn't really get that far. One thing is, well, it's one player and you get five lives. Um, there are some treasures in the game. There's a, there's a counter up at the top that says TR that's treasures remaining and that's how many that are left in the stage you can go around and try to <clears throat> um try to collect all the treasures if you want but you only have to have like so many of them and then what you'll do is you'll go back up to the um there's a store up at the top of the screen and it's a um i guess it's like a vitamin store and you get uh, the Vita Blaster from them after you get so much money you end up with the Vita Blaster Which can shoot uh, stuff down toward the end of the game again You can watch another playthrough because I didn't make it through but you can watch another playthrough of this through um, <clears throat> Through another channel and they can show you this game um, There are a number of jelly beans that make the blob react a certain way Um I'm going to tell you what all they are and what they do, what they turn the blob into. Cola turns him into a bubble, of course, and um, the bubble allows you to travel underwater. You can't go underwater unless you have him, and also there are some spikes underwater that will pop the bubble and that will instantly kill you. If you jump in the water, that will instantly kill you. Either one of those will kill you. Um, there's the tangerines, the trampoline. You have to make sure you land on the trampoline. If you land just a little bit off of the trampoline, you die. But the trampoline, as long as you hold up, you keep jumping on it, you keep going further up each time. So keep that in mind. 
And then like if you need to jump onto a platform, you left or right whenever you get to the top of your jump. Um, licorice turns him into a ladder. That's one of the ones that is uh, one of the main ones because you have to use the ladder a lot. Honey will turn him into a hummingbird. Um, this is useful for if you had to trampoline up to somewhere and you whistle for him and he doesn't come because he's on a lower level, you have to try to throw him a jelly bean down there that's a honey one so he'll turn into a hummingbird and come up to you. And every time that you whistle for him, he'll come to where you're at or he'll change forms, whatever you need him to do. Um, the cinnamon is a blowtorch. Uh, the vanilla one is an umbrella. The punch one makes a hole in the ground that you can drop down through. Apple is a jack. Root beer is a rocket. As far as I know, you only use it once you leave the vitamin store. Strawberry is a bridge. You have to have him close enough to the actual area that you want a bridge before he'll actually go on over and slide out and make a bridge. Coconut, he just turns into a coconut that you can throw, roll, whatever you want to do with. And then for that Vita Blaster I was talking about earlier, that is a ketchup jelly bean. Um, the Vita Blaster is a gun that you can use toward the end of the game to shoot certain things down to shoot them out of your way. Um, like I said, most of these you'll use are the punch, which makes a hole. The ladder, which um, is a licorice one, and um, you'll use the uh, the vanilla one quite a few times, which is the umbrella. And I'm trying to think if there's another one you use quite frequently. The, the tangerine, which is a trampoline, you'll use it uh, quite frequently too. Um, Again, again, this game is, it's moderately difficult, but it's not, it's not a bad game. Now, whenever I was a kid, I would have told you it was probably a horrible game because I had no earthly idea where I was going. I didn't know that the punch one would drop you on down levels. So, for a long time, I didn't know where there were any levels. I just thought there was a subway, and it took me a while to remember to go down the subway, and then once you go down to the subway, you can actually go down further with the punch. And you try to find as many treasures as you can. And uh, you take them to the store and you buy the Vita Blaster, which is the gun. And you use it on later on. Um, use the Vita Blaster. And it um, you can shoot stuff down. Some of it comes back. Some of it don't. And then as you get to the end of the game, because I watched the gentleman play through it, what you have to do at the very last boss is you kind of have to run back and forth and try to throw a, he's, the blob has somehow got caught, he's in a cage, and you have to, like, kind of run forward as you're tossing an apple one, and it has to get right into his mouth, and uh, he turns into an, he turns into a jack, and he knocks the, the beans over onto the, or not the beans, but the vitamins onto the, to the guy that, that, that kills him. Um, so there's that, but, uh, it's a little short kind of game. Uh, like I said, the playthrough takes probably 35 to 40 minutes, depending upon skill level and, and how you do everything. Um, it is a one hit kill on any enemies. And like I said, if you fall in the water, you die. Uh, if your bubble gets burst underwater, you die. Um, you get hit with anything else on that one part, you die. Uh, you miss the trampoline, you die. Other than that, uh, there's not too much else to say about the game. Um, it's invented for its time, and it's a 
it's a good game to play through, I would say, until you have beat it the first time. Then it might get a little bit boring because you would know where everything was. Um, after that, there's really nothing else to do. Oh, excuse me. There's nothing else to do on the game. So, um, once you find everything and do everything, uh, you pretty much beat the game and there's, there's no more, there's no more challenge or anything. So it, it's good for a playthrough. It's good for one, for a couple of playthroughs, um, until you beat it, you probably beat it once or twice and then you'd probably be, you'd probably be done with it after, after that, unless you wanted to try to challenge yourself and not use a certain specific jelly bean or not do this or not do that but it's a good game for a few playthroughs not one of the best but it's pretty it's still pretty good um pretty good concept with the jelly beans turning the blob into all kinds of different uh, different shapes and things like that some of them you can come up with like cola and bubble and apple and jack uh, things like that, you know, they made, they made different stuff like that. So you can kind of, so you kind of know. Um, the next, uh, Friday night flashback will be, um, A Nightmare on Elm Street and Abadox. Um, A Nightmare on Elm Street, I did not play because I didn't really like the film series all that much. I was a Friday the 13th kind of person. And back in the day, I did play the Friday the 13th video game. And I thought it was, um, I thought it was, uh, there's just a lot of stuff that uh, that's on it that's really, really bad. Um control wise and things of that nature and that they could have made a, a lot better game and the same people made nightmare on elm street so whenever i was a kid you know the, i i wasn't drawn to the movie to begin with and i wasn't drawn to the video game because the friday the 13th game was so bad so um i didn't play it either this will be um one of the first times i ever try to play this game and to try to get through um i briefly played Abadox one day and um, I had never played it either and uh, I briefly played through it one day and what I played through of it I did I did fairly well to have not played the game before so we'll have to um, we'll have to play around with that and kind of see uh, we'll have to see what what we get out of the game and uh, we, we may end up doing a playthrough of one or two of these, um, a full playthrough, if if the game is good enough to cooperate with um, me trying to play through it. If if it looks like, like I said on Friday the 13th, how, um, how the mechanics on that game work, if it's something like that, I'm not playing through it. I will show you um, certain things on the game and we'll tell you about certain things but I'm not going to play through it because uh, that's one that I played whenever I was younger and I had difficulty with it whenever I was younger so I'm not I'm not going to go through it I mean like I said I'll show you guys but I won't do it so. but until we see you next time um, we'll sign on off here and be done